A live stage show here at E3 2011. I'm Chris Waters, here to talk about a game that I had the pleasure of seeing yesterday in Nintendo's booth, but that you're going to have fun seeing right now. It's The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Joining me is Eric Peterson, localization producer for the game. Eric, welcome to the stage. Hey, great to be here. Excited to show the game. Yeah, it's a pretty exciting game to be showing off. I mean, Legend of Zelda doesn't make a whole lot of appearances. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so here at E3, you guys are on, on the show floor in a big way. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited to show off this game uh, to people, give them some hands-on time. You know, you can see there's even some stuff in the booth, you know, with the birds. Um, you know, we're going to be, uh, you know, showing you a bunch of stuff today. I kind of want to run through, you know, a little bit about what we're showing here and maybe give you some more background info. Well, let's first talk about the birds before yeah. we do too much else because we just saw that awesome leap off into the cliff, yeah. into the clouds. You're just free falling. Oh, for it a feels moment. so good. It feels so good. It does, and then boom, your your trusty mount swoops under. And now you're flying a bird. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is a little bit of bird riding. I should give a little background information on, on what's going on yeah. here. So Link uh, has grown up in, in a world that really uh, knows only a life above the clouds. You know, they, they've, they've really only lived there for as long as anyone can remember. Mm -hmm. um, and and their, their whole knowledge is, is just, you know, living above the clouds and, and flying birds. Um, and, you know, as you can see here a little bit, that there's an expansive area uh, above the clouds here that you can actually go later on and explore. Um, it's a little bit kind of like the, kind of like the ocean, uh, you know, in Wind Waker, yeah, sure. where you can, you know, you can, you can head out, check things out. You know, actually, a lot of these little uh, islands here that you're seeing off in the distance, you can actually, you know, fly over them, just land leap on. off, land on, you know, do a little bit of exploration. Uh, you know, of course. Uh, now, you know, do, do you get back on the bird bike? Jumping off into oblivion again. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You, can, you can jump off again. Um, you know, and, and in this uh, in this world, you know, they don't really know anything below the clouds. You know, it's it's been kind of a forbidden, uh, you know, dark and evil place, and, and all they've known is life above the clouds. So, uh, you know, of course, later on, you're going to explore that. You world find out a thing or two clouds. about the yeah. clouds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sort of that similar. You know, start in the little village, yeah. uh, expand into the world yes, beyond. Yeah, yeah. You know, that a lot of Legend of Zelda games. Yeah. Race. Well, speaking of that village, uh, uh, you know, one of the areas you can kind of see here uh, is, a, is a village called Skyloft, and that's going to be kind of a, a hub area in the game. Uh -huh. You're going to be going back there again and again, you know, maybe picking up some extra potions, uh, you know, maybe upgrading your items. But speaking of upgrading, you know, one of the really cool things about this particular game is that, uh, you know, in the previous games, you might collect tons of rupees, and maybe by the end of the game, you're not even sure what you want to spend them on. Yeah, or uh, you just have so many that, yeah, you know, yeah, you, 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 you you're all set. Uh, yeah, you're all set. Uh, Believe me, there's no shortage of things to spend uh, your rupees on in this one. Actually, beyond that, you're going to be collecting items throughout you know, your adventure. And some of them are pretty hard to find. It's not easy to get. And, uh, and really amassing those, and then you're going to be spending them to upgrade you know, things like you know, your, some of your items, maybe even your shields. Uh, and so it's a reason to keep collecting stuff, keep finding stuff. Sure. I mean, that whole you know, classic Zelda mechanic of, you know, you gain a, you gain your, you know, your bow and arrow, but then you gain the fire arrows. You get, yeah. you get your wallet, but then you get your wallet that can actually hold a couple hundred rupees. That, you know that, that just keeps driving you forward and exploring. Well, in this in this game, there's just more reason than ever to, to keep exploring, keep checking things out, and, and that that upgrade system actually really uh, adds a lot to the game. No doubt. Uh, so we just saw bird riding, which is right. obviously, you know, a form of locomotion akin to uh, sailing. Yeah. King of the Red Lions in. Wind Waker, similar design is that like coloration too, from the boat to the bird yeah, sure. as well. There's, a, there's you know? a similarity there, and, and later on you're going to see that you can actually open these portals down into the world below and uh, and, and fly down and explore those areas, and then you're actually going to be able to go back up, you know, and, and at will later okay. on using these statues. So uh, that's something you're going to have to kind of stay tuned to see more of. Sure. Yeah. yeah that you know. You explore and you go further and further, but then you like master that exploration. Yes. You get to travel a little quicker. Very cool. And now, so tell us where, where we've ended up now. All right. Uh, you know, Link is back in his iconic outfit. Yes. Rocking the Hylian shield. Yes. Okay. A couple, a couple things to point out here. Uh, you know, this is the first dungeon uh, that you're going to be, uh, you know, experiencing uh, in the game. And uh, you know, what, a couple things I really mentioned here is that this is a game that uses uh, Wii Motion Plus. You know. Yes. Uh, and and it really uses it to amazing effect. Uh, you know, everything from. Uh, you know, controlling your, your items here. You know, you've got uh, Julian here who's playing, is, is controlling the beetle. Flying that around, you're going to be using Wii Motion Plus for all of that. To all, uh, you know, all of the sword fighting, it just feels so realistic, so real. You have a real connectedness to it. And, and actually, you know, here, here's an enemy here, and he'll, he'll face off against this guy. It's, it's almost like, you know, every, uh, every enemy you face is kind of its own combat puzzle. Uh -huh. You know, because it, you can't just, like, you know, uh, you know spam a button or, or just kind of, you know, flail to, to really... Uh, 
you know, beat an enemy, what you're really going to notice is that, um, you know, they're going to be blocking attacks. Sure. You know, if they have their sword raised vertically, you know, you, you have to think about that, and you remember you're going to slash down, because if you come from the side, they're going to block they're it. They're going to block So really you really slow. have to approach every enemy as its own combat puzzle. And you see, you know, one of the visual indicators of this Wii Motion Plus functionality, folks, is if you see Link, he's holding his sword out. He's not holding it in the same place every time. He's right. maybe holding right. it off to the right a little bit, a little higher, a little lower. That's that we motion plus in well, action. Exactly. I mean, it really feels like you have that sword in your hand. So if you, for example, want to be, you know, slicing from the side, you're actually going to do a side slice. You can even do things like, you know, slice from, you know, a diagonally up. You know, any angle you want, and and you're going to you're going to see later on uh, in this demo that you're going to face off enemies that really require you to constantly be attacking them from whatever opening you can see. Yeah. Now, folks are, you know, very intrigued by the the sword and also. Certainly about Zelda canon, uh, one of the questions coming in from James in England is about uh, left hand versus right hand. All right. You know, which which sword, which which okay, is like yeah, sword no, hand. It's, you know? it's understandable. <laughs> you know, um, uh, it's, it's always something that comes up. You know, uh, you know, traditionally what we've done with these games is, you know, when you have that nunchuck, uh, you know, that's that's on your left hand controlling that. In this game, you know, we're going to stick with that right hand controlling the Wii Remote. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, user Chaos Blade in London wants to push back at the bird section a little bit and wonder um, wonders if there's combat when you're on the bird. You know, I, that's something you're going to have to stay tuned on a little bit. You know, okay. we're probably going to talk a little bit more of that later. But, uh, you know, we're going to leave a few surprises for you. You don't want to know everything right now, do you? Yeah, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I mean, I kind of do. But yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I okay, okay. okay. And here we see a skeleton just being sliced apart. Right, and right. Again, you folks probably saw the skeleton, you know, holding its sword. So that, that's, that's a great example. You yeah. know, the skeleton is constantly moving, you know, their swords blocking, and you have to see that opening and strike right when you at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, just another example about how the combat can be a puzzle. You know, an another thing I want to mention about the dungeons uh, uh, in this game, or, you know, this is the first dungeon, but this is a this is the first game, you know, in the series where I really felt like, you know, everything is a puzzle, and sometimes uh, it's a dungeon just to get into the dungeon. I mean, it really, it's like, you know, I, the lead-ups to these things are, you know, just as challenging in a way as the dungeon itself. It, there's no no easy entrance in these Ex things. So it expands the the challenge out beyond. Absolutely, and and this is this is not a game that's easy. All right, there, there's a real challenge to this one. Uh, I think fans are going to be impressed. Yeah, that's actually a question we got through here about the difficulty of the boss battles. Uh, you know, was wondering. You know, is it going to be easy? Is it going to pose a good challenge? It's, I, I, I think it will pose plenty of challenge for people. This game is, is going to be pretty tough. It's now, pretty brutal. Now, I have a question because I got a chance to play this demo yesterday. Got the upgraded beetle, and then this sort of this woman dressed right. in a cloak. She's got a gem on her head up right, here. Right. Who is she? Okay, that, that's a major story element. Another thing that you don't oh. really want to you don't really want to know too much about right now. Okay. Me, this is one Fair of those uh, one of those games that. You know, when you dive into it for that first time, uh, you really want to know as little as possible and that kind of stuff because it's, uh, the story itself is just it's amazing, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've done a great job with that stuff. And so we're he here we're seeing some, you know, some beetle action flying to where Link can go. Right. You right. know, hitting switches, opening dungeons, that that whole some stuff. Of that, you know, and, and some of those puzzles, you know, this is just one of the first uh, dungeons here, but you know, some of those puzzles get really pretty tough later on. Yeah. Really going to incorporate a lot of those items that you have. You know, another thing to talk about with that Wii Motion Plus is it's not just that Wii Motion Plus applies to, uh, you know, your sword and your shield. I mean, it's also going to apply to every item that you get, and they all have a lot of unique control methods. You know, with that with that beetle, you, you know, you're controlling it, and you're flying it around. But, uh, you know, the same gotta, way you do with the bird. Uh, yeah, but you can kind of use your imagination to kind of see, like, where we might go with some other items using that Wii Motion Plus. Well, last year at E3, you guys showed off the whip as one of... Yes, that's another, another great example. So satisfying to be... Uh, Flailing that around, absolutely. And uh, any other any other gadgets you want to reveal no, nothing, this year? Nothing you know, we I saw want the beetle right before, now. You know, like I said, I'm not, I know I'm being kind of coy, but you know, uh, 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 the Zelda series is one of those ones that uh, you know I, I think fans like to have those surprises when they when they engage with the game and, and dive into the first time. I, I know that uh, you know as I've been going through it, you know, there's nothing like that satisfaction you get when you play that Zelda du dungeon for the first time. You know, it's just like that thrill of it's discovery. It's just like nothing else really gives that kind of kind of feel and. Uh, I know that people are really going to dig that when they get into it. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got some more questions right. coming in from the folks uh, in Denmark, actually. Thomas okay. writes. Long uh, distance question. Yeah, we've seen, you know, we sort of saw the wide open Sky Island area. Okay. And you right. mentioned traveling to the world below. Yes. Um, will the world's world below be interconnected? Uh, you know, will you do, or would you have to come back up to the Sky Islands? Like, what is the sort of whole world map, how does that, how does that work? Together? Okay, well, you know, we're not really showing uh, uh, any of the 
below the cloud stuff. I mean, you're seeing that we're jumping right to a dungeon. But you know, what I can say is that uh, you know, as you're flying above, you're going to uh, slowly throughout the adventure be opening portals down below, mm -hmm. and that's where that interconnectedness comes in. So okay. again, you can you can actually uh, fly over those portals, dive back down, adventure some, find a statue, go jump right back up, go back to go back to your hub. There's that constant interplay between you know dipping down below the clouds and uh, rising back up again. And now we see some eyeballs freaking out and gaining you access to yeah, yet another yeah. treasure chest and that like really iconic sound yes, that, yes. that uh, Miyamoto-san was demoing Absolutely, with the orchestra yeah, yeah. in Nintendo during the press conference. Yeah. Um, a lot of questions about Zelda's history and right. any sort of connectivity. You know, typically it's the land of Hyrule or, right, right. you know, people piece together a timeline, you know, sort of. Yes, the, yes, every course. game is sort of yeah. a, a game unto itself, but yeah. people tie these threads together. Do you want to comment on any of those? You know, I, I, kind of yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a delicate subject, and you know, we don't want to reveal too much. But I can say that this story does deal with the forging of the Master Sword. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that really does play. Oh, really? Out. Yeah, it does. A very a, an important event. Yeah, it, you know, huge, all. huge event, and also it does lead up to the events in the Ocarina of Time, uh, and, and that, that's really. Uh, you know, I'll leave it at that. Say that. And of course, Ocarina of Time 3D coming out. Yes. The whole new yeah, generation yeah. of folks going to get to experience that yeah, one. Yeah, so there's really going to be a nice uh, interplay there. Yeah, people are experiencing Zelda for the first time. And Henrik, who has clearly experienced Zelda before, writes from Norway, asking if uh, Koji Kondo is composing the music or collaborating on, you know, the sort of iconic Zelda tunes, the new riffs right. you guys are creating for right. Skyward Sword. What about the music for this game? You know, uh, the music uh, orchestrated. So, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it, absolutely beautiful tune. Um, I think you might have heard a little bit of that being woven into the, the press conference there. At the end, there, I think there's some, some music there that fans may not have uh, recognized immediately. Um, and, you know, some of that stuff is coming from that new soundtrack. Uh, it is stunning, and they've done such an amazing job. And really, I mean, that orchestrated music made such a huge difference to the, you know, the impact of those scenes. And, uh, you know, you saw a little of the taste from, uh, you know, the cinematics yep. uh, and that art style, you know, that you're seeing. Really, really unique art style, um, amazing cinematics, and that music really draws together to create these really impactful scenes. And speaking of music, uh, music hasn't always just been background for Legend of Zelda. It's been the gameplay mechanic, yes. you know, yes. playing that ocarina. Yeah. Uh, John from New York wants to know if this this incarnation of Link is also a musical fellow. There might, there gonna might be, be playing an there instrument? There might be a musical instrument making an appearance, yeah. Yeah, these guys, it's every question you want to ask, it's, you know, I want the answer, but I yeah, want to yeah. discover it yes, too. Yeah, yeah, It's Absolutely. definitely one of those games. Yeah, yeah. And so now we're making our way through this All dungeon. Right. So you're seeing a little bit of Wii Motion Plus there, doing a little balancing here. Uh, you know, this is just a slice of, of this dungeon. You know, I, I think that the, the overall experience is, is huge. All of these dungeons can be just massive experiences. And, and like I said, sometimes just getting into the dungeon itself is enough challenge. It can really be uh, an adventure. And we've also, of course, because some of Nintendo's big news this year at the press conference is the Wii U. Right. Yeah. And we've got Nial from Dublin as well as Ricardo from Mexico asking if, you know, backwards compatible this, like functionality with the Wii U, that. Do you guys have the Wii U in mind when you're developing this or any sort of connectivity to that? Right, right. Is that on the plate or are you just sort of focused on So this, this game is, uh, you know, firmly a Wii game. You know, it's coming out on Wii. It's coming out this holiday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, really, we're showing it for Wii and, and that's what we're happy with. And we're really actually happy with how the visuals turned out on Wii. game has just nailed that uh, you know that bridge point between the two where it feels like a Zelda game but it really offers a lot of new experiences really groundbreaking in a lot of ways and really turns the tables on a lot of things that's very cool yeah thank you so much for bringing this by yeah. I, now one of the things I liked about this temple is you know these design touches where you have these plants then you know some of them might if slashed yield a heart or something but others are just there for the aesthetic sense, you know, yeah. it really sort of creates the sense that this is a rich world. And, you know, yeah, you can slash that mushroom all you want. It's not gonna yield anything except the, the delight of seeing, maybe practicing your cuts with the Wii Motion or, Plus. Or, you know, uh, maybe not. Or maybe not. There may, I, uh, I think you're gonna have to do a little bit more discovery for yourself. But, you know, this is actually a, a good example of, of, you know, that sense of discovery when you're going through things. Uh, you know, you're always constantly hunting for those little upgrade items because mm -hmm. You really want those. I mean, the upgrades uh, are going to be significant. And you know, another thing I want to point out here, and I, I won't talk too much about it, but I mean, you notice there is a shield gauge up there on the top left, and that's something that you know people haven't really seen before. A so. shield gauge. Yeah. So um, 
And now oh. doing a little collecting of yeah. fungal spores uh -huh. in the environment. Yep, exactly. So an another example where, hey, you know, uh, you're, you're slashing that mushroom, there might be a reason to do that. So you're gonna be constantly collecting stuff in this game. Um, you know, and the really important reason is that now more than ever, there's a reason to do that. You know, there, you aren't just collecting stuff for the, the sake of collecting it. You know, you have a pretty strong motivation to be grabbing. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need. Yeah. need to do that it's a, to progress. It's a, pretty deep, it's a pretty deep system, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad to hear it. And, yeah. you know, folks, uh, this has been a really lengthy and really satisfying look at right. Legend of Zelda yeah. Skyward Sword. You mentioned when it was coming out. Mention it again. All right, holiday. Coming out on holiday. Coming out on the uh, holiday yeah, this definitely year. Definitely pick it up. I mean, uh, you know, it's just it's an incredible experience. And, and I know that fans are just going to eat it up when they get a chance to play it. So. All right, Eric, thank yeah. you so much hey, for coming by, showing yeah. it off. Pleasure to have you. Yeah, we're definitely proud of it. Excellent. Now, folks, if you are hungry for even more Skyward Sword stuff, check out our written preview of it, which includes some notes that were revealed during the Nintendo Developers Roundtable last night that you didn't see on the show here. Now we're off once more to the wilds of E3 and the Ubisoft booth to see what Homer Ibarra gets up to in that world.